Okay, so let me wear a slightly different hat here. Um, the, 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 today's workshop has been about the soft ground construction op options. Um, I'm a structural engineer, I'm not a geotechnical engineer. Um, and my particular interest is timber buildings, not only timber buildings, because I've designed lots of concrete and steel buildings as well. But I'm going to say a few words about timber buildings, some of the new work that's going on with post-tension timber and cross-laminated timber. But the real point of the talk is to talk about the soft ground issues and re-levelable buildings. And I'll mention also base isolated buildings and what's happening for the rebuild of Christchurch. So just say something to start with about timber buildings because that's my uh, it's particular interest. If you wanted to make a prefabricated a three-story building, you could stand up some columns and drop in some beams. And this has been done many times around the world. But what's special about the, the timber buildings that we're designing in, in right now in New Zealand is that we, we run a steel cable through the beams and we, we make that post-tensioned. We stress it up and we solve the problem of making strong connections by running a steel tendon through the wood. So it's hollow sections with steel tendons and we can do the same thing at the next level and we can do the same thing at the next level and we've just got a new building system which is is starting to happen various places and the best example of it right now is in Wellington. This is actually the first building in the world which is using these post-tensioned tendons in the beams and the architect for this is Ian Athfield who's with it with us today and the structural engineer is Alistair Katnack who's here I hope somewhere and so this building this was taken a few months ago but the building will be finished in, in May I think and so this is new technology in lightweight uh, multi-story timber buildings. There's another way of doing it which is to make a building like that and run the tendons vertically into, into walls and put some steel dissipators there and this has just been done recently in a building in Nelson which has been in the news this is the Nelson Marlborough Institute of Technology, designed by ISJ Architects and Oricon Consulting Engineers. That's the building under construction. And that's Carl Devereaux, who's now with Sierra, looking at the, at the anchorages. So there are new ways of building timber buildings. That's just to, to tell you one way around it. We've done some tests in our lab of these buildings. This is a, a, a two-thirds scale building that we built in our, our lab. And the person who did all the work on this is Mike Newcomb. Are you here, Mike? He's here. So this is his PhD project. He built that building. He designed it and built it. And we arranged for it to be stressed. And then he, he arranged for it to be tested under simulated earthquake conditions. And this is a little video which will just show. This was not real time. This was done over, <coughs> over days. But with time lapse photography, Mike was able to capture this and just show how the building moved backwards and forwards. So this is, this is a slowed down earthquake. And the building behaved so well under the earthquake, we had to, we, we had to move it out of our lab to let, let the next people in. What are we going to do with it? Well, the decision was made to actually dismantle it and re-erect it. And it's now sitting on the lawn at the campus there. And it's the head office for, for Stick, the Structural Timber Innovation Company. It was put up like that. Um, Tom Craig, architect, and Holmes Consulting did the engineering of it. And Mainzeal Construction built it. And, and, and there it is, and that's the finished building. If anyone's interested, we can arrange to go and have a, a visit. And that's Robert Finch sitting at his desk because that's now the head office of, of that building. So that's pretty much on timber except there is, a, there is a, a new timber product which is coming. It's on about to come to New Zealand and it's called CLT, Cross Laminated Timber. Some people call it XLAM. And so it is panels, it's like very thick plywood. Um, now Chris, are you, is Chris going to be talking after me? <laughs> okay, so I won't say too much about it because you're going to hear more about it. But Chris, Ed, of Edmonds from from Exlam is actually making a factory in Nelson right now, and they're going to start making this stuff. And so this this wood panel stuff thing to do with with that is to actually pass it around and have a look at it, have a feel of it. So it's it's like thick plywood made out of boards, and and you can build houses out of that. You can make big panels like that. They'll be coming out of the Nelson factory. And then you can, if you like, you can make a building like that. And this is a building in London at Murray Grove. That's the finished building, a nine-story building. So it's, it's, a, it's a whole new building system made out of wood. But instead of using four by twos, it uses big prefabricated panels like that for the walls and the floors. 
Um, this is a nice building in Austria made out of the same stuff. And I want to focus on this building for a, a minute because look at this building. It's lifted up off the ground on these piles. And if this building were to have some differential ground movement, you could come back afterwards and you could, you could jack it up again very easily. And, and that's actually what we're here today to talk about because one of the big problems in this precinct of Christchurch is that there's a lot of liquefiable soil and we've got to find ways of designing buildings so that <coughs> without, which don't cost the earth, so that if we do have more liquefaction we can fix them up. <coughs> so, so that's that building there. So <coughs> let's talk about the ground. It seems to me that if we're going to have some kind of re-level, it's a hard word, re-levelable buildings, buildings that we can adjust the direction, the height of, we've got, there are three possibilities. We can have a strong foundation, or we can have some strong support beams, or we can build a strong building. And I'll show you what I mean by those, just in very simple terms. Suppose you have a building like this, which has got a big concrete foundation underneath it. We've got a light building, we've got some sort of adjustable stuff in the middle, and we've got a strong foundation. And if, if we build this building without deep piles, and we get liquefaction, what's going to happen? We might find that it moves like that. What are we going to do about it? Well, if we've got a strong concrete foundation, we can jack it up again, and we can go right back into it, <coughs> and we can continue to occupy the building, and we don't have to knock the thing down. And that's what that sort of dies vision, if you like, for the Peterborough village is that we can do that kind of thing. Well, there's, there's another possibility there is that if you wanted to have underground car parking, the strong foundation could actually be the underground car park. And the whole building would go like that and be jacked up. And even if you, the floor in your car park, underground car park, had a bit of a tilt on it, so what? Wouldn't bother me. <laughs> and, and you could still exist like that. Um, uh, the other possibility is instead of having a, a very expensive concrete foundation, you could have a much lighter concrete foundation, a weak foundation, with some adjustment down here at a very a strong beam underneath. And it's just another way of, of, of doing it. And once again, if the building tilted, that could be timber or steel or something like that, but if the building tilted like that and the foundation, even if the, the weak foundation got broken, it would still be there and you could, you could jack the building up. And this might not even be concrete, it might just be gravel down here. So you could make that work, but this is getting a bit awkward because you've got to be quite a long way down to make that work. So let's look at another way. If we, if we made a building out of those wood panels, those panels I was telling you about, we could actually put the panels into the, into the building itself and make it like a, like a box. So we have a strong building and we have some adjustment and we have a weak foundation. We don't have to spend all that money in the ground now, not as much as before. And so once again, if it tips, it always seems to tip the same way in this earthquake, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so if it tipped over there, um, one, once again we could, we could have access to, to jack it up and, and make it work like that. So there's a whole lot of different options, and, and all of this is very much dependent on geotechnical engineers designing foundations down here, raft foundations or piled foundations, uh, different ways of, of doing it, or, or, or fixing the ground, compacting the ground, or doing something like that. Just a few examples to finish off. Uh, 2009, they had a big earthquake in, in Italy, in L'Aquila. I had the chance to visit it last year, and when I went around the streets of L'Aquila, there were hundreds of buildings, all damaged, but all propped up with temporary propping. It's, it was a, it's, it's a stark contrast to Christchurch. In Christchurch, if in doubt, knock it down. <laughs> in Italy, if in doubt, leave it up, and we'll find a way of fixing it someday in the future. So there's, there's whole city blocks all propped up like that. But the other interesting thing there was that a lot of people lost their homes. And so what the Berlusconi and his boys did is they said, let's, let's rebuild houses. And they rebuilt houses for 15,000 people in a year. And the concept was this, was to have some underground parking, like I was talking about, with a concrete slab which had some kind of base isolation on it. And then they called for a competition to build three or four story buildings on top. And I went to have a look at some of those. So this is under construction, it's a, a, a greenfield site, concrete slab, <coughs> um, reinforcing, and then this is the, these are the columns, and then on top of that they have these base isolators which are dropped onto the top of the column. So those are things that will move, and um, where's Jared? Remember we went to Christchurch Women's yeah, Hospital yeah. and had a look at those under the Women's Hospital. Yeah. Very, same concept. They'll be in the extras. 
They'll be in the extras. <laughs> the only building in Christchurch that has base isolation is Christchurch Women's Ho Hospital. And it's a very similar system to this. So, but this is what you can do. But this is on a smaller scale, you see. And then what's happened now is that they, that's the, 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 these buildings are all occupied. That's the car parking there. If you up, Upstairs, it's like that or like that. All these lovely apartments with families living in them. But you can imagine this. If this was to have some differential settlement, you could come in here and make it, you could readjust it and fix it up. So that's the kind of concept that we're looking at. Um, as far as rebuilding Christchurch is concerned, there's some interesting jobs coming on. This is just around the corner in Victoria Street. Jasper and, and Jade are designing that. This, this building doesn't have what we're talking about, but it, nevertheless it is one of, it's a pre-stressed timber building of the site, the kind we're talking about. <laughs> but this is interesting because this is the old St. Elmo Courts. When I was a consulting engineer, my office was up there on the second floor. It's gone now. Uh, but this is the artist's impression, Rick Proko's new artist's impression of the new one. And this is going to be base isolated, and it's also going to have some uh, pre-stressed timber components. It's a mixed hybrid building with timber and concrete. So that's all happening.